I start playing these games at 5 o'clock in the morning because that's the only time that I have to play these games. This is not the game to be playing at 5 o'clock in the morning. Company of Heroes, then and now. Company of Heroes is a real-time strategy game that was released in 2006 with two more expansions to come out in the coming three years. The game has received very well with multiple Game of the Year awards with various high ratings from different sources. In this review, I will actually be adding a fourth question which is, how is the modding scene? Before I've always just had, does it work? Are there expansions? Is it still fun? But now I'm adding, is there a modding scene? Because the modding scene is still somewhat alive for this game. So let's start off with, does it work? For an older real-time strategy game, this game works very well. Usually in older RTSs, the AI is kind of all over the place, the pathfinding sucks, it's terrible, your troops, they're just kind of doing nothing, I don't know how to describe it, but with this game it does work pretty well. The AI is still really off, however it does have a useful system where you can tell your AI buddies where to go, what to attack, what to capture, just by using a few hotkeys and pl clicking somewhere on the map. I did have a few glitches though, such as German artillery raising the fire but then never firing until I moved them 15 feet in a direction then they decided to fire and you do have a couple of clipping units and just so you guys know if you're trying to send an assault force across the bridge there's going to be some traffic jams the pathing even though it's still pretty good for an older RTS it's not the tanks constantly run into each other when there's a tank on a bridge your guys don't know what to do. They cannot get past it for some reason. And one simple artillery bomb will, it's not pretty. Is the game still fun? Yeah, the game is actually really fun. The skirmish mode is still the best. The multiplayer still works if you're using the new Steam version, but I do have to stress this. You have to buy all the expansions with this game. Otherwise, Steam gets confused and the game doesn't launch properly. Things start going wrong. You have to buy all the expansions, but that's a good thing because the expansions add tons more content. Tales of Valor, yeah, was a bit lacking, but it did still add three more campaigns for you to play through. It also added three more multiplayer modes that were really creative, really fun to use. There was one where you just had tanks, another one where you were surviving against hordes of enemies. It really added some new cool ideas. Same with Opposing Fronts. Opposing Fronts added two new factions for you to play as, both on the Allies and the Axis, and it added two more campaigns. The first time in a World War II game that we really got to see an emotional side to a German campaign that was really nice, really nice and touching to see. And the Amer the original Company of Heroes only had an American campaign. Here we have six campaigns to play. That's a lot of content. And these games are constantly going on sale. I mean, it's like every other day that it and bo both of its expansions are $10. Just go and get the game. Um, the game is Fetch. So now that I accidentally covered are there expansions on the Is It Fun gameplay, let's get more back into the Is It Fun. Yes, it's still very fun. The multiplayer is very fun. The skirmishes are fun. The campaigns are actually really fun. These are some RTS campaigns that feel like you're actually in a war. You're not just creating as many units as you can and then sending them against an enemy. Your resources are very limited on multiple missions. You're limited to so many troops on multiple missions. You're giving very specific objectives that you feel would actually happen in a war scenario. It's go destroy this artillery. Once the artillery is destroyed, the Germans are going to counterattack, defend against the Germans. Or if you're on the Germans, defend the beach against the British invasion so that your units can retreat back to Berlin. It's very nice to see gameplay objectives that actually reflect actual battles. And the campaign also introduces you to a lot of micromanagement systems that you'll need in order to win in the multiplayer scene. It's it's actually really just a genius campaign with genius maps, genius objectives, and a really great way to get the player knowing how to play the game. So next, how was the modding scene? The modding scene is still pretty good. There are a couple different Company of Heroes mods that have won the Mod DB Game of the Year, and they're still active today. There's still some mods being released, though it is starting to die off a bit. I'm still waiting for that zombie mod to get released. There's a, a couple different mods that really improve on the game, such as the Eastern Fronts, which adds the Russian factions if you don't want to go get Company of Heroes 2, and the Europe at War mod. The Europe at War mod really makes you feel like 
like you're in a real battle. You have to choose your units before you get into the battle. There are no capture points. Wherever your unit is, is your territory. It's really nice balance. You don't get too many tanks in these battles. It's mainly infantry based, but one tank can make the difference. It's a nice mod that I would actually like to see implemented in future games. Now, I know the question is going to come up, should you buy this or should you buy its sequel? That really depends on how you are as a player because there are some things that that Company of Heroes 2 does better and there's some things that Company of Heroes 1 completely blows out of the park. Company of Heroes 1, the factions are a lot easier to learn. Their skill trees are also a lot more balanced. You don't have to go through in much more research. You can get into it a lot easier. You also don't have to pay for skill trees which I'm still pissed about. And the units on each side feel pretty evenly matched. Yes, the Germans are a bit outbalanced. They do have their amazing tank columns alongside their mobile artillery, which it's hard to counter that. But the Americans do have counters for that with their paratrooping doctrines. The British have their counters with their artillery doctrines. Everything feels pretty balanced in Company of Heroes 1. What Company of Heroes 2 does better is it gives the line of sight system, which is beautiful you, you can finally hide the mg42 in an alleyway and actually ambush somebody in company of heroes 2 when you couldn't do that in company of heroes 1 it also adds a lot more cover based things with company of heroes 2 and the winter stuff and a really fleshed out russian faction but you have to pay for commanders the skill trees are a bit hard to get into the factions are also a lot more hard to learn it's also a little more difficult to learn some of the mechanics in company of heroes 2 so really it's all based on what you want to do. If you're a big fan of RTS games, I'd almost suggest going to Company of Heroes 2, but if you're trying to learn an RTS game and really get into them, I'd really suggest going to Company of Heroes 1 first. So there you guys go, Company of Heroes. It still works. Uh, the modding scene is still very active. The expansions were great and they are definitely required to play, otherwise your game doesn't work. And... I'm missing something. Oh, the game is still fun. The game is still very fun. The, the campaign was done very well. The multiplayer still works if you're using the new Steam version. So just go out, buy it, play it. It's on sale like every other day for 10 bucks. So enjoy it. Next week, we're doing Company of Heroes 2.